What is going on, guys? It's Ryan here with the Dent Digest live show. And I have a special guest here, Mr. John Hiley. How are you doing, Mr. They call Hiley? me Wilson, Mr. Wilson, right? <laughs> oh, man, listen to this guy. <laughs> hey, you ever seen uh, – there was a video back in the day with Mike and Tom Price, and somehow mm -hmm. at the end, Tom Price's thing was like this. He just kept <laughs> sinking further and further into his chair, and by the time he was talking, his eyes were just bouncing up and down and <laughs> type stuff i won't do that to you guys though that's funny though that's fun but, uh, yeah i'm doing great y'all it's a real pleasure to be here it's an honor to be on your uh new show because i think it's so cool i've been watching it myself and uh i'm like uh i'm like a groupie man i'm an addict of this show it's great yeah thanks man i appreciate the support you know it's been uh usually it's been interesting. It's been a little live, something different, kind of bringing some some of the tool manufacturers on. I mean, look, you came up with your tool. Your tool got some love on the show a couple weeks ago. That thing yeah. is still a beast. And if you guys don't have that thing, the tactical handle, the Gorilla Grip, that is an awesome addition to if you have any of the A1 tools or the Tequila tools, that thing is awesome. Yeah, I think we're getting close to coming out with the adapters as well for the Ultra Handles and the adapter for the smaller sprockets on the A1. So I need to text my guy. <clears throat> last time I texted him, I was like, hey, man, when are these finally going to be done? He was like, they were done like last week. And I was like, well, why didn't you text me? He's like, I forgot. <laughs> and of course. Like, you got to keep on top of that stuff. So uh, right now, currently here in Dayton, Ohio, I'm in the middle of a hailstorm and uh, also in the middle of promoting our mega media event that's coming up, which uh, we're going to have – Ryan right here speaking uh, at the Mega Media event. Not only is he going to be holding um, like a title spot right there, where he's going to get a solid hour of speaking about marketing and branding and some of the things that I admired when I was looking at uh, you know your Instagram, your your Facebook, you know some of that branding and that clean look that you put together. We're really going to be able to dig in and see what's behind that. But we're also something new that we're doing this year. And I don't even know that I told you this yet, Ryan, we're doing speaker panels. So we're going to have, yeah, we're going to have three to five of uh, the speakers get up there and talk about different topics and different subjects and just kind of uh, mastermind about them right there on stage in front of people. That's a great uh, idea. Yeah, build off of each other's ideas. And I got the idea at the Dayton uh, social media marketing event that we have here. And uh, it was just like one of the coolest things to hear different people once they started building off of each other's perspective, that it almost turned into its own unique perspective right in front of the audience. And I'm looking forward to that as well. That That's a good idea. That's It's kind of like the, um, there's a lot of guys that I see online that kind of do these speaking engagements and it'll be three and four sitting in a chair and they're all commenting on a subject. So I think that that'll be a huge addition. I'm kind of excited so too, man. that. Yeah, I think so too. Above and beyond that, we are going to bring back the workshops as well. So we're going to literally have laptops out and actually doing uh, what we're teaching at that event. So cool stuff. And I see the dent lion on here commenting. He's that guy. I'll tell you, I picked his brain a little bit at Anson. Right. And we've seen each other on social media and you kind of get that feeling like, you know, somebody, you know what I mean? When, when you're on social yeah. media and and, and YouTube and Facebook and, and you follow him for a little while and you, you kind of see what's going on. And that guy with Google, phew, let me, he was speaking a different language. Yeah. Yeah. He, and uh, he actually took it to the next level uh, within the last year since the last event. So literally he took what Google made all of these changes right around that time at our last event. So literally we're doing, <clears throat> you know, all of this, uh, these tutorials on that, uh, you know, on all the Google AdWords and stuff like that. And they made these changes and he has even taken it to the next level and what he's going to bring to this next event. I'm not going to, I can't really reveal it because I haven't talked to him about it yet, but um, it, it's really going to help a lot of technicians because some people don't realize Jason was a lot like me. We were literally stuck in a position where we had to learn how to market our business. We had to learn how to be uh, the business owner, not just, you know, uh, we weren't just like literally going to, uh, you know, I'll give you guys an example. Some people who were uh, 
trained by like another company or something like that, like a franchise company. And they end up going back and they, they land dealer accounts that they had previously, things like that. We didn't have that luxury. So we literally had to become the marketers in our company. And, and when you're, when your back's against the wall, I, I truly feel that some of the best, uh, the, the best outcomes, some of the best things can possibly happen. Yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of like my situation with coming from Dent Wizard yeah. up against, you know, and the Northeast is crazy with the Wiz. I mean, there's so many Dent Wizards, even in Maryland. I remember when I was with the Wiz, there was 22 of us just doing dents. You know, now they're doing wheels and bumpers and interiors and they do everything here. And you're just a little guy. Right. So you have to do something to stand out of the crowd because if not, they're just taking it over. Yeah, the truth of the matter is, I mean, if you look at it from a car dealer's perspective, that's a genius business model. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, ultimately, the car dealer, uh, literally, the, the amount of time that car sits on the lot each and every day, it's eating up cash. It's eating up, uh, you know, it's eating up the return. It's eating up cash. If you've got a company that can do it all, that's very hard to compete at, at them companies unless they do something very poorly. And you can actually point that out. Yes. Yes. Or, you know, it's there's other some dealer. You just find the problem, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, you, you got to be the you go to a lot, you know, find a lot to where they're not fixing the big stuff. That's right. That's I'll be your I'll be your big stuff guy. Yeah. You know what? I did that. I did that for a long time, man. But what would happen is I would be like a shark. You know what I mean? It'd be like literally it, they would be like a floating piece of meat bleeding and shit like that in the middle mm -hmm. of this pool. And I would shark around them. I would tell the dealer, be like, well, let me come fix the, what day do they come? They come on Wednesday. I'll come fix the big stuff on Tuesday. And which day do you get back from the auction? Oh, Fridays. I'll come on Saturday. Yep. So <laughs> I was like, literally not only when I started, um, you know, they would, you would fix the big stuff. And next thing you know, they'd say, well, Hey, can you go fix this one too? Or can you fix that one too? Oh yeah. Then you'd be the go-to guy to come there and fix one here and there for one that was being delivered. Yep. It yep. didn't take long that you would earn their trust. And and, and and not even that. Some of these guys sign these. Like we have a big dealership here, Heritage, and they are yep. locked in with the Wiz. Sure. And sometimes I don't do it, but I know there's other accounts that are the same way to where if something doesn't get fixed, they'll call, say, me out. I'll fix that, and I'll just be there every now and then. I don't mind that. I'm getting a sure. premium money for it because I know I'm the every now and then guy. So whatever, you know, I'm not a big dealer guy. I'm not, I've yeah. only got one dealer. I didn't really want the dealer work when I started. I kind of wanted to bring a different angle to it. Um, right. But we didn't have a show last week because it was the 4th of July. So we took the, took the week off. So it was super nice. We did have Rick on the week before. He's kind of in my market. Um, and he has a unique situation. So it was a really good show to have another tech locally on. He drove up and, and kind of, you know, went over things with us. It was a good time. So, but you know, I, I also wanted to comment on, on being invited to speak at your event. It was a super honor. You know, you got a text from you and, and it, 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 it's nice, you know, cause I've been looking at that event last year and I was like, this year I was like, man, I, I really kind of want to go to this thing. It, it looks like some really, really good information. It's, it, it seemed to build over the last couple of years, you know, the last yeah. couple of years, it, it's just seemed to the more information and, and the products that you're giving out as in the photos and the videos. And I was like, I looked at Don, uh, it was a Don Cavanaugh's photo. I'm like, we were talking at Anson. I said, man, that's some really good photographs that, yeah. average dent guys don't have yeah that's absolutely the truth and each event we change it up you know what i mean so being in like the literally the hail belt of america right there you know in denver colorado man we're literally going to have hail damage repair shoots we're going to have shoots for door dingers we're going to have shoots for the big dent guys we're actually going to have shoots if people want to drive their vehicle up and they want to get photoed with their vehicle that's fine as well um, we're actually going to go uh, back to a few old classic vehicles, one at least that I know of. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be crazy, crazy cool to get a, a shot with. And uh, we're also working on the exotic, so we don't exactly know what kind of exotic vehicle that we're going to get yet. <clears throat> but we're definitely going to have something different and unique. 
so it's going to be some really cool high end stuff. And to be honest with you, you're right. And it has built up over the years. And one of the things that we found is that the, the more unique that photo shoot is like the more different that it is, uh, literally the more that the photos are actually going to get engagement, not only online, but especially when you run paid ads. Mm -hmm. And you just, you just ran one, didn't you? With, with one of the photos. I, I did. Yes. And what I did was ultimately, and, and be honest with you guys, this is so crazy. I actually took the, uh, I had a funnel. I don't know which one it was, but one of the funnels that I built had me on the Tesla, uh, working on, I think it was the front of the hood and the gall wing doors were up on the back of that Tesla. And the way David had, had the gall wing doors lit up, that photo has outperformed just about anything that I've ever ran online. Why do you think that is? Uh, you know, I, it's just, it's super unique, man. It's really unique. And then I'll tell you what I did was on this ad, I decided to run it as a screenshot off the funnel. And the reason why I had this like bitchin' American flag behind it, but it was kind of like had a black gradient. So it kind of blended in and it just made the photo that much more unique. It almost looked like the photo was framed in like a, a darker American flag frame. And for some reason, whatever, uh, it just struck a chord. It just stood out, you know? So that's so we've, we've, things. we've got a couple new guys in here. You may have to explain what a funnel is. Oh, well, basically a funnel is uh, a salesperson online for you. That's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you have websites, but then you have funnels. Funnels are engaging. They have Facebook connected to them, meaning that Facebook knows who landed on the landing pages. Facebook knows what button they clicked. Facebook knows if they hit the second page to get your lead magnet, which is basically something that you're giving away to collect an email address. <clears throat> and Facebook understands that. And based on that, we can run something called retargeting ads. So what I had done this year, when I ran that ad on Facebook uh, for the, um, you're talking about, we, we ran an ad that we made about $60,000 worth just on that ad alone. We got about somewhere, we're up to about 60, I think it's the last 62. Uh, if I get fully approved on this next supplement, it's like 62, 13, you know, some odd cents or something like that, that we made off of this one ad campaign. And the ad campaign was two separate ads. So there was two different photos, but they were, we were I was split testing them, meaning that one of them and the other one hit on an algorithm 50% of the time. So we could see which one outperformed. And I just kept both of them running because they were running about 60, 40. And because of that, I wanted my other side of the audience when Facebook re hit them, I wanted them to see the 40, you know, so that way it wasn't kind of uh no. How much did you spend on those? We got about 1200 wrapped up in the ad spend. Okay. Yeah. Now I will tell you one of the things, and I talked about this in my podcast, one of the things that helped tremendously is that my current client base is all over this area and they were commenting all over these ads. And we had one guy saying, John, I've been going back to him for 12 years, which he was an insurance agent, insurance, insurance adjuster. And we had just person after person commenting and recommending our services on them ads. So it built what we want to call in a marketing realm, social proof. Yeah. Basically, everybody wants to, uh, you know, regardless, uh, I will guarantee you and most people won't want to admit that they do this. But when you're scrolling through Facebook, a lot of times when people see a photo, they look to see how many other people have liked that photo before they like it. Mm -hmm. It's just it's human nature. And uh, on top of that, what they did a test where like in New York City, if you put like five people looking up at the sky, Next thing you know, 200 people will be looking up at the sky. Yes, it's so funny. Simultaneously. And so in the marketing realm, that was social proof. And uh, it also built, built rapport with the clientele and, and my clientele base. And it caused people to look into the ad, but then the ad was structured in a way where it was totally social proof. So the top of the ad on the scroll had um, uh, Facebook recommendations because they came from Facebook. I want to lead them, keep them in that realm, right? And it was quick to the point, and literally we just cleaned house with it. And it, and if people did not request or click the button to call me, or they did not send an email or put in a forum, I would know that, and I was able to retarget them with a different ad, saying, "Oh, wait, something must have went wrong," you know. Oh, and that's a good that, idea. That next ad that came out for the retargeting was a customer testimonial ad. 
where, you know, I figured if they didn't click or call me, they might be, maybe they just don't know, like, or trust me yet. So they need to see yeah. my face at the beginning and then they need to see some customer testimonials. And I have military man dressed up in a, uh, you know, his camo suit, which can't get better than that right here in my area. I mean, it's military galore right here, which, uh, you know, support why support our military and to be able to run that ad to him. And then it had some other people behind it was just another way to do the retargeting ad. And the retargeting ad was funneling people right back into the system. So it creates, um, it really creates a buzz per se. So how did you get into the whole marketing? I know, you were doing dent repair, you were doing some training, you guys have the dent trainer going on. How did the whole marketing, like you've seemed to really make a push with the marketing, the website, the SEO, how did all that come about to where you are right now? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Everything that I've created inside this industry was me creating something that I felt that I personally needed at one point. OK, so years ago, I'll give you guys an example. Everybody knows. Uh, I don't know that everybody knows this, but uh, a lot of people know that Mike Toledo is my business partner in DentTrainer.com. And, uh, you know, we both own Dent Trainer. We both own Dent Trainer Media. The dude is absolutely phenomenal at what he does. And uh, so kudos to Mike. Um, but uh, years ago, like Mike was like the guy. So literally to be a good leader, you got to be a good follower. OK. And I'm going to explain why that is. So I followed Mike because he was out in California. You know, I own this little business. I, I sucked at dent removal. <laughs> you know, I was like one year into it and I'm on Dorting.com searching around for any help that I can get. I'm looking for examples of how to build my website, how to start advertising and all this. And then voila, of course, I run across Mike Toledo, who at that time, I mean, we're talking about 2001, was already just killing it or no, I'm sorry, 2003 to, uh, it was right around 2003. I would, I, yeah. So anyhow, small detail. So he's already out there killing it, already making these bitching videos that are better than most people's videos today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like back in 2003 and I'm looking at him and I'm looking at his company in California. He's got like the best website I've ever seen. He's got all of this great stuff. And I'm like, man, I want to be like this guy. I'm like, because, you know, back then I'm sitting there thinking, you know, California, they know what's going on because they're in a saturated market. You know, he's really got to work hard. If, if I make my company look like his out here in Dayton, Ohio, I'm going to kill it. You know, yeah, because nobody's doing what he's doing. I'm, I'm ahead of the curve by, by, by finding Mike. Uh, so anyhow, long story short, I make my own website. It looks horrible. And uh, so to dress it up, I steal one of Mike's photos and put it on my website. And Mike catches me. Actually, this whole Dording.com form caught me. And they all call me out and they say, John Hiley, you know, why are you stealing people's photos? And then I get on Dording.com and everything's on fire. And I'm like, oh shit, it was an action shot on a Mustang. <laughs> I still remember to this day, it was a Mustang action shot. And I'm like, oh man, everybody's mad at me. Uh, and then all of a sudden I look at my DM and I got a DM from Mike and I'm like, oh fuck. And Mike's like, John, take down my photo or put, he gets serious about these photo things, man. And uh, with all good, with good reason, man, he works to what he does. He goes, take down this photo or put dent time on it. You know? And I'm like, dude, I apologize. I thought it looked really cool. And I'm just saying, he goes, well, man, you can keep it up. <laughs> so he says that I can have it. And, uh, so I've got a funny story to add to that. Yeah. It's kind of a same situation. So I was building, I had a web guy, it's kind of out of college building a website and you know i took little bits from everybody's site you know you you do your research sure and i and i took the frequently asked questions from mike well, mike's website because they were so detailed and they were so good and i sent it to him and he went through putting them in it was a wix website he was building for me and copied it word for word sent it live and i woke up a couple mornings later with a copyright email from mike toledo and my wife goes who is Mike Toledo? And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? She's like, what did you do to your website? And I'm yeah. like, what are you talking about? And then looked at it and I'm like, so it's the same thing happened. It's funny, you know, and, right. and I actually called Mike and said years later, it was, it was this year. I called Mike and said, Hey, I got to confess something. And he's yeah. like, bro. And that's how I knew the situation with you. He told me that he's like, the same thing happened with John. 
So, <laughs> so now get this long story short. That's hilarious, man. And how Mike figured that out that quick, who knows? But <laughs> so, so uh, anyhow, he ends up telling me, he's like, well, I got this service for 150 bucks a month. And he said, you can I'll advertise your website. I'll create you this little video and I'll also consult with you. Right. And I'm like, Dude, sign me up, man. 150 bucks a month. Let's do it. And I ended up signing up, which got me on phone calls with Mike about every couple weeks. And uh, dude, I am telling you, that is the best money that I ever spent because number one, 150 bucks is nothing. Yes. Uh, to have somebody who is where you want to be get you up to speed in the amount of time that he got me up to speed. So it wasn't long that I had my little company here in Dayton, Ohio, rocking like his company out there. In fact, we started doing so well that I hired him to build the website. It was like five thousand dollars back then, you know, back in probably two thousand five. By that time, I, you know, I'm sitting here going, "Hey, man, I'm too busy, Mike. How much is going to cost? Five grand? Okay." cutting them a check for $5,000 because I knew the power at that point. Like I knew that if you find somebody where you want to be, the quickest way to get there is to have them help you get there because they've already dealt with the learning experience, the learning curves. Like they'll say, you know, no, no, don't go down that path, go down this path. Right. And they will get you there really, really quickly. So Tony Robbins is, is, uh, coined for what's called decade in a day. And basically that means you can get 10 years worth of somebody's experience in one day of immersion. And man, you know, that's what the mega media events about. So long story short, as Mike is teaching me all this stuff, I'm learning how to do it myself. And really uh, to begin with, to step back a little bit, you know, right when Mike started teaching me this stuff, it was out of desperation because I was, uh, you know, I was trying to build something like I didn't have many car dealers. Uh, I was a shitty dent guy. So I was still learning how to become better. (laughs) Right. And then on top of that, I still needed, I needed business, you know, and I was pushed into a corner where like I had to figure it out, but I had my mindset. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make this company run like the best company that I can find out there. And then I'm going to try to even make it better by putting my own personal spin to it and stuff like that. So it's been a road since then until now. And things have changed so much. The the core concept and the core principles stay the same. The reason why people purchase stay the same, just the delivery methods change. Uh, if do, do you know what I'm saying? Completely. So, yeah. Marketing is pretty concrete as far as principles, but you know, you've got to learn how to get the leads to come in to, so they can see your marketing and so they can actually, you can convert them into ideal clients or purchasers. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Who, so that, who, who trained you? Let's just, we're not going to get into detail. By the just... King actually. Oh man. The ding King. Yeah. I I was one of them guys who, when I got into my training to begin with, I literally started searching the internet and I would get three or four different uh, training companies working against each other. And I would say, well, this guy says he can do it cheaper. And then this guy says, well, this guy says he can do it cheaper. So I would have three or four of them fighting against each other to get me the cheapest, the least expensive deal because I really couldn't afford that much at the time. So the Ding King came in at the lowest rate that that you could possibly purchase training at that time. And, uh, you know, I went out and I trained with them. And I still remember coming back and having like six bucks in my bank account. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and uh, I mean, that was back. I was just like a lot of guys, you know. Yeah. I I was young, number one. I mean, me and my wife, we went out there with my son, but uh, we were – what we're 21, honey, 21 years old, I think. No. Young yeah, bucks. She, she's going to correct me. I'm always messing up. So I would have been 22. 20. So I was 22 and she was 23 when we went out. So not only did I not know about uh, a budget, you know what I mean? Or did I not know about anything about how to control finances because my finances were in a sock drawer uh, inside of my, inside of my sock drawer in a sock. So that, and, 
And where we lived was probably a 750 square foot apartment. Uh, it was two bedrooms and had just one kitchen, one living room. And uh, so that's where the business was born. The business was born out of like no money. I got a I yeah. had my, uh, grandma co-sign the loan for me to go out there. And really, I, I, I had nothing to start. I started at the bottom, 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 man. I like to say I was so low, a mosquito wouldn't even bite me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? It, you look at that. I, I look at a lot of stories like this to where you have guys that put everything on the line, take a leap and feel the struggle all the way there, you know, and, and I yeah. tell people I have my new guy right now and he, and he, you know, he's really struggling trying to learn and it's hard and, and we're busy. And, and I just look at him and I say, just enjoy the process. You don't look at it at the time, you know, at the time you're, you're, you're really struggling. You're like, man, this sucks. I just wish I could not have to work, you know, work all these hours and, and sweat and tears and, make everybody happy and it's not about you it's it's about the customer and you need to kind of step back and, and enjoy mm -hmm. the process because at yeah. the end of the day you're going to look back and be like why the hell did i stress so much why yeah, totally totally man uh, you know and and the interesting thing about it is ryan like when you asked me at the beginning like what made you come up with all this stuff and do these things right so everything that i came up with was a cure for my struggles when we came up with denttrainer.com, that was something that if I would have had during that time from coming back from, I looked at it like this. I always remembered. I said, how did I feel when I came back from the Dean King and didn't know how to fix dents? Yeah. Way, right? Yeah. And, yeah. I, and granted, nobody does with uh, two weeks training or something like that. Right. So I look back and say, what would have helped me? Right. What could, what would have helped me at that time? What would help me now? You know, let's develop something for that. Right. And then I look at it like the marketing thing, you know, where, where I was able to pay Mike to do all this stuff for me. I'm like, how can we create that for everybody? You know, like anybody who wants to jump into the market. I know that it works. I believe in it 100 percent. You know, I know that we can make this happen for people. How do I framework it into something that uh, and Mike was the architect of that. But I deliver them. I help deliver the message as much as I can. And uh, how can we put together the cure for that problem that I once had? Because I know there's all these other guys that have this problem. The gorilla, hey. bear, my hand hurt. Yeah. My hurt when I was using the dent tools. So I'm like, what can I do to make my hand stop hurting? The gorilla grip was born. You know, uh, it's just, and I tell that, you know, products are solving, usually solving your problem, but you also got to make sure that other people have that same problem. So you got to kind of survey your market. You yeah. got to understand your market. You know what I mean? Before you know, you I think, I think with, with you and Mike, it, it's perfect marriage. Mike's kind of the quiet, reserved, knows what's going on you're kind of the in the face put it out there let's get the message out there as fast as we can yeah it's it's kind of a really good marriage you know what i mean it's like it's like the good cap good cop and bad cop and it, it works really really well yeah mike's a creative mike's a very very creative uh type and i live off of execution so mm. uh, my whole thing is like i'm trying to execute something before it's even built and I'll give you guys an example. Um, uh, Mega Media number one wasn't even built. Uh, I told Mike, Mike's like, let's all build it first. I'm like, let's sell it first. You know, because <laughs> there's a market for something before you can build it. I'm like, we already know what to do, man. I'm like, that can be built. We can look, we can build this thing. You know, mm -hmm. we just got to sit down and you got to sit down and say, okay, well, where do we start here? All right. So what do we do here? What would the, make the most value for him here? And you build the architect around it, right? We already knew the guy who done the photos. We know how to get the cars. We know how to do all that stuff. Put that aside. Let's see if people want it first, mm -hmm. because if we build it and they don't buy it, you know what I mean? Then you waste your time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we want to make sure there was a market there first. And as soon as we found the first day launch and all them people purchased into it, we're like, it's on, we're building it, you know, and we started architecting it from that point on, you know, you know, I, I, I tell you, and I have to give you credit that the dent trainer I pay every year. We don't always use it, but it's there. You yeah. Know, I use the business center of it. The, the glue pulling waivers, the little authorizations, you know, um, one of the insurance companies asked for a certification for hail estimating. Oh, and really? I gave him the dent trainer certification because I don't have a certificate. Come on. Who, who, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, that's what I gave him. You know, um, yeah. it was all state. It was all state. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, there, that is a tool that if you guys don't have, 
they they run deals throughout the year periodically. I think I did a Black Friday deal, and I've just been paying for it for the last couple of years. Yeah, two hundred ninety seven dollars, I think, is what or two hundred eighty seven yeah. for our yearly cost. And it's and I know you guys have a lot more stuff coming out being added to it, but it's still really good information because you have you mm-hmm. that is a different aspect than than Mike. You know what I mean? It's kind of a good mix. So right. if you guys don't have that, you need to sign up because it's totally going to pay for itself. Well, you know, Mike does lines and I do fog. Yes. And that's really helped a lot because he's covered the line board guys and I've covered the fog guys. But occasionally, in all honesty, you want to be good at both because I do. I use lines. Uh, I'll give you an example of where I use lines. So fog, you got to kind of push it way back to get a crown out. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's say you got like a little arch crown on top of a door or something like that. And I've got to lay my fog on the ground and just not far enough away to get the type of view to knock that crown down. I'll use a line board to knock it down. Yeah. Cause a line board can be 10 inches away from the fog and you can see every little wave in that area. Uh, so it, it's funny when I, when I was training both, when I was training chain, he's like, you know, he's watching dent trainer and he's like, I want to try lines. Let's see if lines is, is easier. So we, oh, take shit. A, you know, take a I light board and, and pinstripe it. Yeah. And we put it up there and he's like, I'm looking at it. I said, I can't fix a damn thing with this thing. I can't finish them in lines. I can fix it and it can look good in lines, but then I take them off and I put my fog in there. There's little holes everywhere. Yeah. Cause what happens is my little lows get smaller than the tiniest lines on there. And uh, that that is probably where I've got to break out the fog, and that's probably just a creature of habit, you know. Yeah. But same thing happened to me. I was training this guy named Mohammed, and he came to me from Boston. He was a really, really smart dude, man. This guy was the guy in the collision shop that when they had electrical, they called him because he wouldn't give up on shit. This guy would drive him crazy. He would stay there <laughs> all night. He would like, you know what I mean? He's like one of them dudes, I am not leaving until it's fixed. Yeah. And Body Shop knew this, and he was so intense to train, dude. It was like he was so serious. But he came to me one morning and goes, John, he goes, I want lines. He goes, I see Mike. I can see the high spots perfect. He says, I want the lines, John. Two weeks into his training, I'm like, did the same thing. It's lined up a board. You know, I got one of my Stucky boards, and I lined mm-hmm. it up, and I put the two lines on the side. About a, uh, three days later, he goes, John. I no longer need lines. <laughs> <laughs> it, and you're not you're not doing much training anymore, correct? No, no, I, really, I I hadn't had a lot of time to do that. Yeah, so well, I, we're in the middle of a hailstorm right now, and then we did three mega media events back to back, and people really don't see that. You know, we have the event, but we spend months of preparation before the event. Um, I still haven't decided whether it's, I, I probably honestly would be more profitable if I didn't do it, but because I love it so much, I do it more for the love of the, just the love of it, man. I mean, wait, wait till you see when you haven't been to one, dude, when you go to one, it, it's, it is the event, dude. I'm telling you what, it's a different, it's a different atmosphere, man. When you got people that are investing in a bunch of people that are investing in their business and they really want to learn and you get all these people in one arena, man, the connections that are made, it's like going to like a high level mastermind group or something like that. And you come out just knowing a group of great people. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's next level, dude. It's let's, it's let's get awesome. into that. Let's get into. I had a lot of questions this week about it. So let's sure. get into the, the nitty and gritty yeah. on sign up, how all that can go, and then kind of give them a little browse of, of what's going down. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, obviously we're having it. Uh, well, not obviously because some of you guys might not know, but we're going to be having it outside of Denver, Colorado and Greeley. And one of the coolest things that, that uh, the, cra- the coolest thing that we're having, man, this is why I'm s- another reason why I'm so stoked about this event is we're having it in Cole Fox's shop. Okay. Cole Fox was a mega media event one attendee and He basically came to the first mega media event and it kind of like kicked him over the edge to go into this huge investment, which is this shop that we're going to be having the event at in Greeley, Colorado. Um, And Cole Cole shop 
is a he took the Greeley movie theater, the old Greeley movie theater, and renovated the entire place, put a 150 car bullpen behind it, four separate shops in one building that are independently heated and air conditioned. Uh, he's got a full blow body shop with paint booth, all of that stuff in one side. He's got a full blow PDR shop in there. He's got a full window tending operation and he's got a full auto detailing operation. And he's got a full second full building from his old shop auto detailing operation. That's probably one of the nicest looking uh, facilities that I've ever seen for auto detailing. And it's all brand new. Like he went in, and I'm not going to tell you the amount that he spent, but let's just say it's not, not it's a little, lot of money. not little. It's, it's a money, man, money. He went in and 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 did all this stuff, and we actually got to see the building, the changing, the renovations of this inside of our inner circle group after that event, and we've been following Cole's story. Uh, this entire time, and we're actually built up to the point where we're having with him and his wife, Michelle, who is another key, key person in that business. Uh, we're having that event at their shop. It's like like a brand spanking new place. And so many cool cars. Cole's got a, uh, I think it's a 64 Impala. Impala, yeah. It is red with like, I think it's like white interior, convertible. And he sent me pictures of the bottom of the car. It's one of them cars that people put mirrors under because the bottom is as clean as the rest of the car. It's like, like a Dr. Dre car. It's It's got yes. wire wheels and hydraulics and it is it's awesome. It, yeah. But it looks, it has that original look to it is what I like about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't look gangster. It like, it's like an original one with some gangster features like the hydro, <laughs> right? It's a part-time and, gangster. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to be one of the, the, uh, rides that we have in the photo shoot. I personally think that one is going to be, it's red. It's going to stand out, man. I think that one's going to kill it in the algorithm in Facebook. Certainly you, in my market because I have a huge hot rod market here. Right. So. Well, you know, and it ain't even just for the hot rods because here's what you find. I actually uh, – uh, a buddy of mine who owns an insurance company, he actually started doing car shows to promote his insurance company indirectly. And what you found is anybody that owns a, a really nice restored older car usually has a net worth of over $500,000. Um, okay. On average, they have a higher net worth. They also have several other vehicles that are very nice and high end. We're talking like a, maybe an Escalade or uh, something else. I mean, they, that is kind of like an untapped market. And it just gets people and it doesn't even have to advertise to somebody for an old car. Like somebody with a brand new car is like, wow, if he's working on that, he can work on my that car. That makes sense. You know? And, and, you know, so so just the market positioning alone on that is uh, – really really good when it comes to running facebook instagram ads instagram is going huge right now like literally like people like uh, you know, uh people with higher income are going to instagram and they're they're finding a better uh experience because instagram doesn't have all the political shit and yeah. all the things where people are just yapping back and forth with each other you know you just kind of got a a smoother like less stress browsing experience you know yeah, less, less contact yeah. you know but Another another cool thing we're going to be talking a lot at this event is uh, <clears throat> how to create a story brand in your PDR company, and uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about that. And it, it's in a sense like I feel like every most people are doing their marketing wrong, man. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Most people think that the front page of their website having all these details about what they do and and uh, you know we started in 1982 and Grandpa you know did this and that and that's all good and golden. But most people don't read that shit. You know, most people are just looking for a way for you to solve their problem. And I'm going to give you a like a major major thing right here. Okay, most people position their company as the hero instead of positioning the client as the hero. Okay. And here's what I want you guys to think, all right? So, for instance, every movie, okay, every movie that we've ever watched has typically a hero in it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or some sort of hero role, right? Yeah. And I want you to think back at, like, Jason Bourne with Bourne Identity, okay? So, Jason Bourne, he wakes up. He doesn't know, you know, what his identity's gone, doesn't know where he's at. You know what I mean? And then he runs into this lady who starts to help him, okay? She's his first guide. 
All right. So that was the first uh, the first uh, appearance of conflict resolution in that movie. Right. So after that, it's a series of conflict resolution, conflict resolution. Well, everybody wants to be the hero, but everybody's also looking for a guide. Like every hero's got a good guide. Like the yeah. Frodo Baggins, you know what I mean? Had Gandalf as the guide, right? Yeah. And and, and so you got to position yourself, your your client, your customer as the hero for finding you, and you're just a guide in their mission because everybody wants to be the hero of their own life. You know what I mean? I don't care what it is, man. You want to, everybody wants to be the hero of their own life. And when they see somebody positioning themselves as their a hero, they look at that person and go, oh, I don't need another hero. <laughs> you know, they say, yeah. what I need is a guide for my hero adventure, my hero journey, right? So you become the resolution to their conflict, you know? I see. There's a series of ways that you can actually keep people tied into your marketing stream through conflict and resolution. I mean, could you imagine if you were watching Jason Bourne, Born Identity, right? And all of a sudden it stopped because he wanted to tell you about a diet that he's on. <laughs> You you would lose you would, right because now think about how many people's marketing's like that though right so you go on somebody's website and then they tell you about something that you don't care about yeah right they they weren't being a good guide you know and we're gonna talk about a lot about that man it's almost like a hidden secret in the marketing realm is the conflict resolution type thing and uh, I'm doing some rebranding right now personally on it. So it's honestly, it's been something that's gotten me more excited than just about anything in the marketing realm. And the cool thing about it is making the client and the customer the hero of that journey by finding you, it's much easier than trying to position, position yourself as the hero business. Very true. Does Very that make true. sense? And, and just like I was telling you about the people commenting on that Facebook ad, like all them people going, you know, my previous customers, they were making my future customers the hero because my future clients are seeing them. And they're oh, seeing this okay. The okay. Hero for choosing this company, right? So okay. that's like testimonials in the mind of clients and customers make you the hero. Like when I go to try to find a hotel, we recently booked a hotel. Uh, we're taking a little mini trip down to Columbus here to go go cost me more than what you think. I'm going to this shop, big shopping mall, this Easton shopping <laughs> mall. But anyhow, <laughs> we're taking a little, you know, husband and wife weekend vacation. Right. And, uh, so I'm looking at the reviews, trying to find the best hotel because I want to be the hero. Right. I, I don't want the, the hotel to be the hero. I want to be the hero, but how did I do it by going through and reading all of the reviews and scrolling yeah. the bad ones? Okay. Well, that was just some guy price shopping, you know, uh, and then reading a few of the good ones. Right. But in a sense, you got to capture the client very, very quickly in a service-based business, and you got to position them as the hero very, very quickly. And yeah, you, because they're moving on. Yep, you you got to speak to them in a language that they understand, and you got to, you, you know, d d think about this, Ryan. Do people really buy dent removal? No. No, they do not buy dent removal. Okay. In fact, dent removal is just the end to some sort of inner struggle they're having. And, and and I think in, in our industry right now where we are with the dent removal, I think it's changed a lot too because now it's changed to they want the experience. They're paying a premium now. So yeah. you want to give them that complete package of the experience mm -hmm. than just, okay, your dent's fixed. Thank you very much. See you later. Yes. Dude, that you what you just hit on is so perfect because that's the next step that uh, I'm going to be revealing at the Mega Media event. I'm going to be revealing four quadrants of your business and how to distinguish which one of them you're having issues with and how to set up and how to create a very, very simple one-page plan to tackle that issue every 90 days. Uh, so in a sense, it's going to be – it's going to be – such an easy way to do it because in the past, here's what I found. Okay, so people hear the information that we give them and they think that they've got to do everything at once. And then what happens is they might get overwhelmed or something like that. A majority of them pull through, but we want everybody to have a steady plan. We want everybody, number one, what's the core mission of our companies? What's the core mission of our business? What are we about? What do we want to put out into the world? Okay. What do I want to, um, uh, you know, uh, let's go to the, to at my funeral. What do I want somebody saying as my eulogy? Well, you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. extreme, but honestly, what yeah. do you want them saying? Okay. Cause that has a lot to do with your core mission. 
And how do I tie that into my consumer experience? Okay. How do I deliver that consistently to the right clients over and over again? And there's a way that you can do it through four quadrants of your business. And we're going to distinguish exactly which one's lacking and how you can make improvements with a one page sheet every 90 days. So that way, at least, I mean, how many people say they're going to do something, but their business stays stagnant year after year after year. Mm -hmm. It's because either one, they're taking on too much or number two, they just do not have a roadmap of where they want to go. Well, what we're doing at the mega media event is creating the roadmap, positioning yourself to when you gain leads for them to want to do business with you, not only want to do business with you, but to see you and say, this is the only person I want to do business with. Because the bottom line is what you just said about the experience is so true. Look, if I have a cigarette right here and a Cuban cigar right here, both of them have nicotine in them. They have two totally different experiences, mm -hmm. right? So the Cuban cigar versus the cigarette, you know, the cigarette costs what? I don't know probably a dollar nowadays or something like that. <laughs> the Cuban cigar costs, you know, a hundred to five hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Totally different client base, totally different experience. How do you position yourself as that Cuban cigar? You know? Yeah. And 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 like I said, it, it's it's times are different in the paintless dent repair industry because we're fixing bigger damage. Prices are way higher than they ever were before. So it's just like you're either gonna buy a Hyundai or you're going to buy the Mercedes. Which one, which one do you want to be? What kind of business are you going to be? Are you going to be yep. the, the Hyundai service department or yeah. the Mercedes service department? It's two different experiences. You're going to get in a loaner over here. Yeah. Over here, you're calling an Uber or a Lyft. Yeah. Whatever Literally, one you want. Something, man, it's so funny that you're bringing this stuff up, dude, because it falls right in line with everything. Like, So what you're talking about is something, believe it or not, everybody's motivation to purchase something comes from a primal instinct, okay? And then you might say, okay, well, if somebody's primal has a primal instinct to purchase something, why wouldn't they just purchase the cheapest car, right? That'll keep them alive. Well, no, 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 because you also have status as a primal instinct, okay? So status to, to somebody, for instance, purchasing the Mercedes AMG is that now the people that surround me are going to help me in case somebody tries to kill me. You know what I mean? Uh, in, in that example, right? So I've improved my life to the point to now the people that I surround myself with and the way that they look at me, now my status is higher. So it's another way of me surviving and thriving, right? It's so crazy. Like you can actually take everything that we do and everything in marketing and break it down to a primal instinct and a primal impulse. And uh, just nothing makes me more excited, dude. Like I live, eat, and breathe this stuff to the point where all day long, like I, that's what I love about our paint, paintless dent removal, our job, is that I can listen to marketing books. I can listen to marketing podcasts. I can continuously fuel my mind all day long while I'm on autopilot fixing dents. Yeah, yeah. A shit ton of money, man. Who else yeah. can do that? I mean, really, it's it's a fucking awesome business, man. You know. So, how many speakers are you planning on having? What is the? Do you have a lineup that's finalized? Do you have? Currently, we have about five speakers. Now, there's some other people that may be coming on board or may not be coming on board. So, I just started talking to people within the last couple of weeks about who we're going to have speaking. But currently we do have five speakers, including me and Mike. Usually me and Mike take the primary role of um, opening and closing the day. So it's either going to be our me, or, me and Mike opening and closing the day in some midday sessions. But again, we're also going to be sneaking in some of these uh, like masterminds, right? Groups where we get the audience involved. You know, yeah. I, I want to know what I want to know. I want feedback from people that are right there, man. So this isn't going to be like a closed thing. This is going to be like, you know, four or five people up there getting the audience involved in the conversation and being able to have a direct, uh, you know, engagement, which I believe is just awesome. It's going to be great, you know. Yeah. And uh, and you wouldn't believe the type of input that we actually get from the audience at the same time. You know, people that are there, the attendees. What, what you really don't see is a lot of people attend every year or every event. So once they come to one, we've got like a return rate of, a, I mean, a lot. And the people that usually don't come, they'll come to the next one. 
You know, we got people that came to Mega Media Number One that's coming to this one, right? They haven't came to anyone after that because they got busy and their businesses are blowing up and exploding. And then finally, they're like, "Man, now it only happens once a year. I can't rely on John and Mike to have one every time I turn around, right? Because we did three of them real quick, like bam, bam, bam." Because we wanted to get everything down. We wanted to get the photo shoot down. We wanted to get everything running smooth as can be. And now that we've got the system built, we just got to show up there and uh, and just continue tweaking and just making it better. Like we, we just – we care so much about the experience of these events that we literally offer – this time we're offering a 120% money-back guarantee where if somebody by the end of the event, by midnight, emails us, no question asked, I'm going to give them 120% of whatever they paid for their ticket back. See, that's pretty cool. That's nice. Yeah. That's how much we believe in what we do because we offered 100% guarantee on our last events. Never have we received anybody that wanted a refund at the events. So because of that, I, I have confidence and it, you know, if, if let's just say somehow we didn't connect with somebody or we didn't uh, help them in any way, then I don't want them to have to pay for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to take somebody's money for something value that we didn't give them. I mean, that creates buyer's remorse that creates, uh, it, it's just, uh, and the type of energy that I don't want out there into the world, yeah. you know? So, yeah. and, and these type of guarantees, they yeah. like, I, I love it because, man, I know we're going to bring it anyway, but now it's like, dude, we're going to – we're just going to – it's going to blow up, man. It's it's going to be a the the best event uh, by far. Everyone get, keeps on getting better. Now, what's included in this? Let's break it down real quick. We've got a little time. We'll probably go a little bit over, but let's break it down just so they get an idea of what's what's included. So essentially the photo shoot – literally gives you somewhere in the nature of about 20 high end photos on uh, the last event. We ended up doing one, two, three. We ended up doing three vehicles. The last event uh, we ended up doing, um, let me see. We ended up doing four vehicles, the previous event, including also a motorcycle as well. Uh, the very first event, we ended up doing four vehicles as well, right? So you get multitude of photos at different angles on high-end vehicles. And the photographer that we bring in is not the guy that you can hire to shoot photos with the, with your family in the woods. He's a corporate photographer. And when he came to my event, he had to ship in two pallets of photography equipment that uh, I had to insure for $200,000, so <laughs> this is like like his equipment is shit that you have to send off to Sweden to be cleaned. His his camera that he shoots with is a thirty thousand dollar camera. Mm. Um, his lighting that he sets up each time he sets up a photo shoot, it takes two to four hours to set up one photo shoot because he puts lighting all around the vehicle that snaps at the exact same time as when the camera goes off that cancels certain areas out, like makes like a real dark background or takes a bright sunny day and turns it into like overcast clouds rolling in, you know, mm -hmm. like he is a, he is a fucking artist, man, at what he does. Okay. So we're going to have uh, him out there. Of course, David, uh, we're going to have the photo shoot set up. So they're going to be getting a ton of photos. They can completely rebrand their companies with these photos. They're going to be getting uh, also the high end uh, video. And if anybody has seen the last one that Mike put together with people speaking on it, the, the damn video almost makes you tear up at the end because you know, <laughs> this guy loves his job. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, the way he's came from video number one, which was good, very, very good phenomenal, yeah. to vi this last video was almost like damn near emotional. It would get your clients emotional when they watch it. And yeah. again, what do you want? You know what I mean? You want something that's impactful to your clients and customers. And okay, so you end up getting that full blow video, right? And you also end up getting access to the previous events that we have for you. You end up getting access to our inner circle. So totally, you know, full blow photo shoot with all of them photos. You end up getting a full blow 4K video with, uh, you know, your company and you on the video. You as the star of that video, right, to brand and, and uh, build your company. Builds beautiful websites, all of that stuff. You end up getting the education. And then you also end up getting the three days at the event learning from all of the speakers that, 
you know, uh, have what you want. You know what I mean? Or uh, you know, the beautiful thing is, even if somebody does have it all, you know what I mean? They're the king of retail in their area. <laughs> you want to you want to keep that throne? Our event will help you. Will uh, not only help you, will guarantee that you're going to keep that throne. Okay, and for the people that don't have the throne, our event's going to take you there, and then you're also going to be part of our mastermind, our inner circle group. So you end up getting all of this for currently, right now, dude. And I don't know how long I'm going to keep this going, but it's a thousand bucks off. You know what I mean? Like they're getting the tickets for under two grand. It's like nineteen ninety seven. It's under two thousand dollars. You cannot book a photo shoot with high end cars, exotics, uh, old school cars with the photographer that I have for two grand. You can't. No. You can't get that. You can't get that video. You could try to get that video produced uh, by somebody that doesn't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to dents or how to talk to a dent customer, and you can get a crappier version of it. Uh, or it's a lot harder than you think. Oh man, the yeah, it's it's a uh, it's very very hard, and the way he cuts them up and shoots them and does all that stuff, you couldn't get that video for two thousand dollars. The only way reason we can do it at this expense at this 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 cheap is because there's going to be a bunch of people showing up that helps cover the cost. You know what I mean? And uh, and then on top of that, the education that you learn, the engagement, the camaraderie, like all of that stuff coupled together, is just you want to talk about experience. This is the experience, man. And then it's going to be an outside of Denver, Colorado. Dude, I'm staying like two or three days after or coming two or three days before. And I'm going to like explore the mountains and stuff, man. You know? Get some contact buzz in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. I I've never been much into that, man. Uh, but, you know, uh, I I'm sure a lot of guys would enjoy that. And I'm fully for it. I mean, you know what I mean? You can yeah. do it want as far as i go just don't get into my fridge and eat all my munchies now <laughs> how do they how do they sign up how do they purchase how do you where, where do they go uh you can head right on over to dent trainer and uh you can purchase your tickets directly from dent trainer and uh like currently we're doing early bird ticket sales and again i don't know how long i can hold on to them i'm actually on conversations right now to make sure we're going to have enough seating and all that kind of stuff because they are really going quickly. Uh, but I would suspect that the sale may be going on for another week. Um, I'll let you guys know. I'm still trying to trying to figure out how we're going to structure it at Cole's shop, how the seating is going to be set up and all that stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, after the sale's over, uh, the ticket price is going to go back up. I don't know that it's going to go back up to full price right away. But What was the full uh, price? A full price is $29.97. Okay, so, and it's down to nineteen ninety seven right now because you know we want to reward people that believe in us, that jump on board early, that commit. You know, because the more people that commit early on, it allows us to expand our focus, to expand. You know what I mean? Like it's just easier too for you guys to to narrow everything down. You know what I mean? It's know who's going to come to get badges printed out, and it's just the right thing to do. You know, somebody jumps on board early, we give them a special, we give them a deal, and uh, we don't want everybody signing up last minute. So we want to keep it to where we have an early bird sale, and then we close that out. We normally get uh, we'll get fifty percent of our early bird sign up at the beginning, and we'll get some in the middle, and then we'll get fifty percent at the end or something like that. You know. Now, is there hotel information, all that stuff on the website? Is there anywhere around there that you've already kind of yeah, got an idea where everybody's going to go to? Yeah, that is all in the fulfillment email. However, it is okay. at the Wood Suites. Um, it's a Hilton hotel that was recommended by uh, Cole and, and Michelle. Uh, it's right there in Greeley. It's right down the road from the shop. It has probably some of the best reviews in the area. So I went and scan, scanned through the reviews and it looks like a really cool place. It looks like the rooms are full on suites. Uh, so that's exactly where I'm staying. I'm going to be staying at the host hotel and uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be something else. Cool. Um, when, what's the dates? October 17th through the 19th, uh, which would be, I think that's the second or third week of October. Yeah. So we're looking three months from now. Uh, so plenty of time to book the tickets. Uh, people will be flying into Denver airport. Uh, so, and Greeley is basically right outside of Denver. Have you ever flown into Denver before? I have never been to Denver before. So I've flown in and flown out and it's, uh, it's an interesting flight. So prepare yourself. Cause 
Yeah. They are kind of flying in and, and you literally go straight down when you take off, you're coming straight up. It's an interesting yeah. flight. So you guys will enjoy that. And that's because the whole city's <laughs> surrounded by mountains. Yes. Uh, which yes. is just crazy. What people don't realize about Denver. I, I don't know if I said this earlier, but you know, the more that I, I looked into it, I'm like, wow, no wonder people want to live there because number one, it's like eighth in the country and being a giant city that has the highest income rate. Okay. So it's like 90,000 average per person and like a couple hundred thousand per household income in Denver. And then you look at it, it's got over 300 sunny days per year, which is crazy. Crazy. You can't get that in Florida. I think no. Jacksonville, Florida has 230 sunny days a year. Dayton, Ohio has 170. That's like almost twice the amount of sunny days that I have right here. I'm like, man, better hope yeah. I don't like it too much when I get out there, Denver. It's better It's better than Seattle, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, yeah, I, you know what, though? Uh, Seattle is another one, one of the wealthiest cities in the country. Yeah. Which yeah, is scary, I, I, just a couple days ago, I Googled that. I'm like, wonder what cities have the most money, you know? And uh, there's a lot of actually, I think down in your area, man, some there is. Of the wealthiest in the world, man. Montgomery County is ridiculous. It's yeah, it's right outside DC. It's it's crazy money. So yeah. I stay as far away from it as I can. Oh right. <laughs> you know it's so funny. We have a place called Indian Hill outside of Cincinnati, and all of it's like multi million dollar mansions, right? And uh, so in, in Indian Hill, I was talking to a concrete guy. He told me, he goes, I won't even work in Indian Hill. I'm like, really? Why? He's like, because they won't pay their bills. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And that, that's what he said. He's like, I just had too much problems with them paying their bills. And I'm like, oh, you know, that's sad. But hey, you know, I never had a problem with it. But I did have one guy showed up at this guy's house. Looked like he lived in a mansion. And his like servant person shows up and is like, oh, this da da da. You know, he wants you to fix this car. I give him a price and they're like, okay, send us a bill. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't think you understand me. Uh, you guys pay me when I'm finished with the repair. And they were trying to get a hold of him, couldn't get a hold of him. I jumped in my truck and left. That's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I still remember the concrete guy, what he told me. And I was like, no, nah, I ain't going to play that game. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get stiffed. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but uh, no, man, I, I, like I said, I, I really think you guys that are watching this really need to, to come to this event. I, I it intrigued me two years ago and I just, we kept, I kept saying, I really want to go. I remember talking to you, what, probably six months ago and, and saying, yeah. man, I, that event looks really interesting just in the things you're offering, you know, that the, the right. stuff like Jason was telling me with even little things of geotagging photos. And there's so much stuff that I didn't know. Right. You know, and, and you're in your area and you're, you're busy and, and you think you, you got to figure it out. And he's talking and I'm like, are you even speaking English? Well, you, you know, the coolest thing about that. And I stress this to people out there because some of the stuff can get confusing, but there's a lot of stuff that if you only got 20% of it right, I don't get 100% of my shit right, man. Like, yeah. I don't even know what's right, and I still to get, don't get 100 I, you know, I fight against being as perfect. I try to be as perfect, try to be as good as I can, right, each and every day, but there's not enough hours in the day. Like, it, only if you got 20% of this information right, it would transform your business, yeah. you know? Because you're adding that additional impact, that 20% impact. And then on top of that, what I'm a firm believer, and we're going to talk about this a lot at the event, is how to break down the high impact activities and focus on them. Because what people don't realize, they spend probably, it's like the 80-20 rule, right? So literally, if you go to your closet, typically there's only 20% of the stuff that you wear on a regular basis. If you get into your dishes inside of your cabinets, usually there's only 20% of your dishes that you use on a regular basis, right? Yeah. And so it, it's it's the 80-20 rule. And it was this uh, scientific study from a guy in Italy who found that like 80% of the wealthy people own – or 20% of the wealthiest owned 80% of the property. And it, that same scenario applied to like everything in our life and it applies with marketing. So we teach you exactly how to zero in on what that 20% is that if you focused a hundred percent of your time on, you're going to maximize it by a hundred percent, man. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So people yeah. ask me, they're like, why, how are you so impactful? Because I spend all of my time on what matters and I learn how to cut out the bullshit. You know what I mean? And that, 
alone will put you ahead of other people that spend 80% of their time just doing random bullshit. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, I mean, I think when you're a paintless dent repair company and you're busy, that's hard. So if you can narrow down to the minimum stuff that you have to do, that's actually going to yes. have a return. Yes. That's, that's it. And you spend a hundred percent of your time on that, man. And if there's something you hate, you find a way to delegate it. And we're going to mm -hmm. show people exactly how to do that, how to, how to move into that realm. You know what well, I, mean? I think some of that is with the automation. I remember talking to you at the uh, hail expo about having a way to post scheduled posts to where it's on different platforms at different times. You know, sometimes I would look at your stuff, even on LinkedIn. And I'm like, how in the hell is he posting on everything eight times a day? I, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's all so, automated, man. We, we go yeah. all that at the event. We actually give all these little secrets, gems out. You know what I mean? And we're, we're, we're just in a world where now not only do you automate it, but you got to understand the percentage of things that people want to see, right? Yeah. Uh, so another thing, I think I talked to you earlier about this, is that I'm going to go into uh, an entire tutorial on content creation, how to create what we call pillar content and how to chop that up into like a month's worth of content. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. how to distribute that and just the channels you're talking about. How do you automate it, right? Yeah. Because guess what? A paintless dent removal video of you fixing a car is usually as good a month or two from now as it is the day that you launched it. Yes. Because it doesn't matter that you launched it on this date. What matters is who's seen it on that date. Yep. Okay. They can see it again and again and again. But if you got a, a quick, easy system, and I, I told Ryan, I was like, I got all the the cameras and all that stuff, but I'm going to do it with my iPhone. Cause I do videos all the time just with my iPhone. And I'm also going to show how to do it on droid. Like literally how to set up what I call pillar content is like pinnacle content. The big thing, the long form video, you know what I mean? How mm -hmm. to do that because there are going to be your clients and customers that are going to be attracted to that. They're going to want to see behind the veil. You know what I mean? Yep. And uh, we're going to show how to do that and how to chop all that up into little pieces and then how to automate it. So you can just forget it. You know, you could go back to fix and dents and you could spend, uh, I, I like to do that during the winter, you know, during the winter month, I'll do a lot more of pillar content and chopping it up into little content. And next thing you know, uh, when the time the summer comes around and I'm super busy, I can click a button and set that stuff on autopilot yeah. and, uh, just keep it going. But you got to invest. Here's where you got to invest time is in the system. You know, okay. invest time in the system. You know, I'll give you guys an example. You know, I go to Planet Fitness, right? And at first I was like, ah, it's a gay, you know, kind of a gay gym, yeah. whatever. But yeah, you know, me and the wife were going there and it's it's been cool. It's a really good deal. Okay. And uh, so we're, we're, we're going to Planet Fitness, but I'm sitting here, the more that I'm going through there, I'm like marveling. I'm like, look at this place, man. Everything from the branded wallpaper down to the machines that I'm on, down to the branded men's yeah. sign on the restroom. When you go inside, it's like I'm like these people have created a massive client experience at a very reasonable cost, and they're they're doing something right. You know, mm -hmm. do you think the owner of Planet Fitness every day is calling up to make sure if Joe showed up to work or Jack show you know yeah. uh, at Planet Fitness? Baltimore or, you know, no, he spent the time to build and create the system. Now you got to build and create the system, but you create it. So that way, you know, you want to create your PDR company, like you're going to do 10 of them. And I don't even care if you just want to be one guy, right? If you just want to be one guy, you still got to create your PDR company. Like you want to build 10 of them because in the future, it's going to be so much easier and so much easier to tweak the client experience when you completely understand the quadrants in your business, right? Mm -hmm. You'll understand where you're failing and you'll know where you want to approve and you'll be able to laser focus on that and spend your time on that. And that's what we're talking about when it comes to spending the 20% time on the things that really, really matter in your business. You got to know where it's at. You got to be able to pinpoint it and then do, do a 90 day plan, man. Listen, yeah. 90 days with a one sheet plan and we're going to give that sheet out to the one sheet plan for 90 days. And we've actually found people are like, well, what if I want three sheets? No, then you won't, you won't do it. Okay. It's got to fit on one sheet, one sheet plan, one to yeah. three things need to be done. None of us are that, that, uh, you know, yeah. focused. 
Right. We're all we're all the same type of guys. Most dent guys have the same per somewhat of the same personalities because we're all we're all out there. If we're doing dents, we're out there and we can't focus on something that long. Right. Right. So it has to be simple. Right. Uh, honestly, this same system works for huge, huge companies, man. Yeah. People don't realize that this this system works the everything's got to be simple, man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you've got to break it down to the simplest form and stop overcomplicating shit in your mind, man, and, and follow a simple strategy and a simple plan that has huge impact. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, like I tell people, like I see dent guys that struggle with making a $2,000 purchase, but you scroll down their Facebook timeline and they just bought a brand new 70 inch TV. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, you know, to, to, at the drop of a dime to pull out your car, credit card and swipe for a 70 inch TV, but not to invest in what bought that TV and make a ton more money over here. So you can buy a hundred of those TVs is well, the definition of insanity. But yet call me up on the phone a year later going, man, I really wish I went to last year. You know, I uh, really want to get into the retail market, John. I'm <clears throat> I'm scared these dealers are going to leave me or, uh, you know, I just have a bunch of body shops. But I want to talk to customers. But but the, yet they they freeze up when it comes to investing in their own business. That That's honestly, the people that come to this event, that's what sets them apart from the average guy is because the average guy is scared to invest in himself. You know, I believe that people are almost like scared of what they're capable of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and, and the sad part is for one, it's a tax write off for your business. Yes. For two, it's just like buying a tool. It's just like buying a tool that you're going to buy and make money. It's just here. Yep. And, you know what I mean? Not, it's not only buying a tool though, man. Like I, I've talked about this, man. You could be the best dent guy on planet Earth, but if you don't have dents in front of you to fix, or you're yes. shitty customers, then or you can't convey that message to a client. Look, you might be able to convey that message to me as a dent guy, but can you convey that message to your client and customers? Because if you can't, I don't give a shit. You could be the best dent guy on planet Earth, and you could end up living in a trailer because you don't know how to convey a message to a client and customer to buy your services. Yes. So that being said, this is the tool that gets your tools moving. And hopefully, actually, in some cases, it gets your tools moving less. Because we had a guy one time that ended up doubling his prices. And what we laughed is, I'm like, dude, you should double your prices. Tell me how busy he was and how he's adding clients. He's like, well, I'll lose half my clients by double prices. No, you're going to leave. You're going to lose the crappy ones. You're not making any money anyway. But think about this. He doubled his prices and lost half the people he was doing business with. So he had 50% more time and was making mm -hmm. the same amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was a no brainer. So either we, we, then we maximize the people I'm working with, add an extra 20 to 30% on top of that. And now you're doubling your money, man. Yeah. You know, there's just so many advantages to learn how to reach your client and customers in a deep, meaningful way that create, creates client relationships rather than customer relationships. Cause a customer is a one time purchase, a client is somebody who you build a relationship for life. And there's sometimes people will come in uh, as a customer and I'll leave them as a customer. I don't want to yeah. deal with them anymore. Yeah. Because I'm searching for my ideal clients. Yeah. You know, you uh, get and, to a point to where you can pick. Yes. You get to pick your customer. You yeah. get to fire that customer. Yes. Yes. And they say that when marketing is done really well, it attracts the people that you want and repels the people that you don't want. That's what I need. I need some repel. Dude, I'm telling you, man, you're, you're going to get it all at this event. They're, they're I'm super, super excited. I'm super excited. Yep. I see Dwayne, a, a friend of mine. He's actually going to be on the next show, Push and Polish. Uh, he said, count me in. So he's a dude that he came to the Hale Expo, really good guy, and just kind of, kind of seen him open up. I, I think for a lot of the guys that were in here, I think it would be a good – a really good, you know, a good event. I mean, you've got John from uh, the Dent Reaper in here, and and Coming. he says he's going. Yep. So, should be yep. a good good event. Are you guys doing any tool sales? Any tool trucks there? 
Uh, yeah, Anson will have their tool truck there. And then usually what we're going to be doing, I haven't announced this yet, so this is going to be the first time. We are going to be giving away three different uh, tool giveaways leading up into the event. And people are going to be getting one entry into the tool giveaway uh, if they buy a Mega Media ticket and then two entries if they end up buying a hybrid uh, ticket. So we're going to be having the hybrid uh, on Sunday after the event. They're going to be doing the hybrid training. Oh, the IMI training. Okay. Yeah, IMI training. I'm sorry. And I'll probably stick around for that as well. But uh, we're going to be having that the second day and we're going to be doing giveaways as well leading up into it. And then we're going to have like kind of like a real cool little pinnacle giveaway. And I'll give you guys a little hint. Okay. Cause we're going to have Dwayne from Dent Killer there working with the brand new MS 200 box. Oh, okay. Cool. Yep. Yep. Cool. Well, tell them again how they can get on there and sign up and try to get this thousand dollar off man you can sign up right now at denttrainermedia.com and uh you can go over there you can check out uh, a little video we got there on the page and you can also check out a bunch of our testimonials good good stuff and currently right now we are doing one thousand dollars off on top of that i do have a two payment option so if you guys want to break it down to a couple payments we got that as well for you Cool. Well, I, I really appreciate you coming on, John, and and I really, really appreciate you asking me to be a speaker at your event. I, you know, it's definitely an honor. Um, hopefully, I can bring a little bit of knowledge there, or you know, see what happens. But I know you're. I, really, I, know, I know you, man. You're gonna break it down, brother. So uh, it'll be good. The vibe around everybody there, dude. It's 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 gonna be great. I love what you're doing there. I know that you're going to bring a ton to the table for everybody that comes to the event. And, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I reached out to you. And I'm also honored being a guest here on your new show. Hopefully I can share it with my audience and, and, uh, they'll be able to check it out as well. Definitely. Well, I appreciate you guys watching another good show here with Mr. John Hiley. And remember guys, see you next week and keep it real. See ya. All right, Ryan.